वेरी गुड इवनिंग जय श्री कृष्ण गुरु थैंक यू फॉर ज्वाइनिंग द भगवत गीता सत्संग द वे ऑफ लाइफ एज डिस्क्राइब बाय लॉर्ड श्री कृष्णा टू अर्जुना ओम श्री गुरु भ्यो नम ओम श्री गणेशाय नम ओम श्री सरस्वताय नम ओम श्री गुरु दत्तात्रेय नम ओम श्री महालक्ष्मी नम गुरुर्ब्रह्मा गुरुर्विष्णु गुरुर्देव महेश्वर गुरु साक्षात पर ब्रह्म तस्म श्री गुरुवे नम so we'll be continuing that is chapter 4 there are only two words left in chapter 4 now and if you are able to finish it within the time frame so we will also begin with a new chapter that is chapter 5 so chapter 4 the yoga of knowledge as well as the disciplines of action and knowledge and lord shri krishna is describing the glory of knowledge to arjuna and chapter 5 is about the yoga of action and knowledge and we will begin with sankha yoga and the yoga of disinterested action as described by lord shri krishna so let us continue the last two verse from chapter 4 verse 41 arjuna actions do not bind him who has dedicated all his actions to god according to the spirit of karma yoga whose doubts have been dispelled by wisdom and who is self possessed wow this is very powerful let us understand what lord shri krishna is teaching arjuna he is saying arjuna actions do not bind him who has dedicated all his actions to god according to the spirit of karma yoga i'll begin with a very powerful lesson which my krishna guruji has taught with this in this regard my guruji has always taught whatever that you perform you know whatever action might be it could be as simple as eating food he says offer everything before you partake of anything to the lord we first say krishna arpan you just say offer it or you just can say lord i offer this you know the food to you before i eat. take just bless it as a prasad so that i can partake of it so that is how you have to do everything dedicate all actions to the divine lord you know anything even if you get say assuming you won a lottery ticket or you won you got a very good job you just have to say krishna arpan god i offer this to you thank you for this you know blessings thank you and you offer that that action of receiving that job anything that you get or performing right you're going for the interview what do you say god let the words be of your wisdom alone so you are not taking credit that you are the giving the interview you gave the best performance no please remember you become a tool in the hands of the divine lord you are nothing but mere an instrument but who is giving you that words of the wisdom the words are coming from your mouth but where is it coming the words are of the divine lord the wisdom of the divine lord which means the knowledge is not yours so when you are performing that action you know you are mere an instrument your mouth is you know speaking you are talking with your mouth the words are flowing from your mouth in this case also this teachings is not given by me ratri ma is only an instrument of lord shri krishna the divine lord is speaking through me he is giving that knowledge he is giving that exposition i am not giving this knowledge if i say i then i stick to that you know knowledge that i sticks to that action then what happens then you incur karma but do you think the i has knowledge that to the spiritual knowledge absolutely not this is what we fail to understand and we take credit to us we give credit to ourselves you know what i did it i accomplished i i am the greatest i am the one or we also feel oh i don't know to do it we either become you know somebody great or we feel completely let down down and out we become martyr so either pride comes to you or you are completely you know a, a low lying creature sort of a behavior you exude so both is incorrect please remember you have to dedicate all actions to the divine lord what is he saying actions do not bind him who has dedicated all actions to god according to the spirit of karma yoga spirit of karma yoga in this entire chapter we were learning how you know our duty is to work alone our right is to work alone we don't we should not be attached to the fruits of the action nor you know the sense of doership i am the doer nothing that you should be able to get yourself into bondage you you should not be able to sorry you should not get attached to any action because the moment you get attached to the action you come into bondage and then comes attachment that attachment causes bondage 
and then what happens because of the bondage you get into karma then you are going to always suffer from the birth of the cycle of uh, sorry it's not the birth the rebirths that is cycle of birth and death and then what happens you are born as different 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 being depending upon your karma you know and then for eternity you are into that cycle then there is no redemption for you so this human birth itself is a redemption through redem to this human birth you can attain redemption redemption from what from being born again and again so the god realization happens through this beautiful human birth and using the human body you are supposed to perform your karma karma means the actions the duties that is pres as prescribed by lord shri krishna himself he says arjuna i have you know i am the one who has defined the orders based on the orders i have prescribed duties i have assigned to them and you have you are a born kshatriya and you have to fulfill your kshatriya dharma dharma is very important when you do not perform actions based on you know according to the dharma then you are going off the path so that is why the divine lord manifests time and again to establish dharma and also put people on the path and teach you what is your swa dharma you know open that knowledge about swa dharma swa dharma means the purpose of my existence the purpose of this human birth the purpose of my life i have to serve that purpose and if i don't serve that purpose then there is a situation in our life we will incur sins why do you need to incur karma you don't have to so my guru ji will always say don't take credit of any action just do krishna arpan let it be see lot of things happen in our life everything is driven by the prarabdha karma please accept one very important lesson the body has born with certain set of prarabdha karma so you are you are here to expiate that karma which means whatever the good or the bad both has to be expiated it's a repayment those karmas have to be repaid some are favorable some are really unfavorable and but you don't have a choice but what happens is when you have the divine lord as your charioteer when you have lord shri krishna on your side he cushions that karma for you he's just saying no sins will accrue to you if you do my job whatever that i am telling you if you have to follow my instructions and if you do that job then there is no karma accruing to you similarly my krishna guru ji will say so don't take ownership of saying that you know if you help someone don't say i helped i helped i helped you know why what happens you know the moment you take ownership of that action you know you have to be in that other person's you know in the other person's place in some other life so that you also have to receive that favor back so why do you take that ownership saying i did it i gave it you know we have this dirty habit we might do little bit for someone and we think we are doing something great something fantastic we are doing never have that attitude at all please remember god is using you as an instrument to you know and to using you as an instrument to get that things for that other person so who is taking ownership of saying i am giving who are you to give please remember whatever you are having is also the also bestowed up upon you by the divine lord so what makes you tell that i am giving we are not here to do anything we are only here to serve his purpose uh, we have been put in that position so that we can do good in this world we can be helpful we can serve the purpose of the divine lord my guru ji once gave us gave me a very beautiful lesson he was talking about a, a very great actor and this actor had you know got married to someone and within a year years time that you know his wife divorced him saying that she doesn't like the house which he had <coughs> sorry that she doesn't like the house which she ha he had bought for her his new you know newly wed wife so that they could start their family they could start their life over there and at that time he was wondering why did this house come he he spent a lot of money um, you know in in a beautiful island and he didn't understand what was the cause because his wife divorced in a year's time and later what happened is he he loved dogs and he had about more than you know i don't know the number i think approximately more than 10 or 11 dogs or even 20 dogs you know something to that number so sorry for my if i'm giving a wrong number but approximately to that level and then what happened those dogs because they were foreign breed you know so he 
had the house completely air, you know centralized ac because these dogs needed that cooling environment they needed certain kind of food because this house was a midst of an island every day every day there used to be a person dedicated to bring the food they had to come by boat get all the food there was a vet who was specially assigned to take care of the dogs can you imagine the dogs had the luxury of living in such a posh place but then some one of his friends asked this actor you know what what is this you're doing imagine you know you're spending so much money on these dogs that is such a huge house you've just given it to the dogs the dogs are enjoying it and then the actor said something very beautiful he corrected his friend and said you are mistaken it is not that i am giving the dogs you know he said i am just a zariya zariya means i am just a way a channel the it is in the destiny of those dogs to enjoy that house that life and they need to get those foods so god has provided me so that i can take care of them you know how profound lesson was that huh? what a fantastic answer which means this person was completely evolved being to say something like that is not a not a simple thing only a man of high you know spiritual acumen or somebody who was walking the path of spirituality alone can say something like that so he didn't take credit saying oh look i am giving these dogs look at these dogs they have such a beautiful house i am the one who's taking care of them no on the contrary he said because it is in the destiny of the dog i was made a channel so god you know used me so that they could get that it is because of them that i have been given this wealth how profound truth is this i am just here a mere an instrument because it is in their destiny and they have to get that so god used me as a channel i have only been used as a channel that is the truth so he did not take ownership of his action he didn't say i am providing it for them he did not say i am giving it to them they look how much you know money i am spending this house in an island a mix of an island you know must be in millions he was such a beautiful bungalow and he you know imagine only the dogs are living there so everybody has their destiny god uses each one of us as his instrument to ensure that we provide you know he uses us to get his work done we always think that you know if we are providing for our parents we say oh i am giving them so much money i am the one who's taking care of them you know my brother doesn't take care my sister doesn't do yet my parents will give them but who is this i who's taking care my guru ji again gave a very profound lesson he says you know people forget that everybody including your parents your siblings and whoever are in this planet earth are all the children of god this entire creation is god's children alone so what makes you independently think you are the one providing for your parents or you are the one who's providing for your children aren't you the instrument who god has appointed so that they can be provided so you are only a provider you are just a zariya you are a channel through whom whatever has to be given whether it is to your parents your wife or your husband or your children you are they are you are being used to serve the purpose of the divine lord he is using you so that they can get that so what makes us believe that oh i am the one who is earning working hard and doing so much for my family so my guruji will say sir you are just a servant of the divine lord i you know the lord uses people like you so that your children can get those you know things that is there in their destiny who are you to say that i am working hard for my children you know everybody is god's children we are all chosen one what makes you tell that i am taking care of my parents stop saying this you are nobody to take care of anybody please remember it is only the divine lord who takes care of all his children everybody his children alone he knows what is right for you them he knows what needs to be given to them and that alone comes to them you are only a medium so never forget this lesson and when you perform this action dedicate everything to the divine lord then you will realize oh it is god is you know using me to get that job done it could be anything sometimes you have to say things or do things which might not be favorable in your perspective you know you might have to you know give a piece of mind to someone so that you can just correct them 
it's just an enactment you're putting on but it appears so real for you at that time what you think oh god i have to do this it's so bad i cannot do this but if it is the dharma of the divine lord you are going to do that you must do it and in that case what happens you cannot say it is me who is doing this task i have done something bad or i have done something good the day you start you, the day you start saying i am the one who is doing good or bad you are going to incur karma so stop taking ownership for any actions you have to only dedicate all actions to the divine lord alone you just not know you're only an instrument you're nothing but a servant of the divine lord when you have this beautiful understanding let me tell you you will be able to perform your duties to the highest of your ability and every task that you perform you will be able to do it with love you are not going to do it with hatred oh look at this i have to sweep the house i have to clean the dishes i have to wash the vessel you know i have to cook i have to do so many different things i am not a servant in this house that is not the bhav you will have on the contrary you will you will think everything is a seva seva means what it's a service i am serving i'm doing service to my divine lord i'll tell you something very beautiful happened last week you know i had to you know clean the house clean our krishna ashram and i was doing something you know quickly my guruji has not been keeping well even in that case my guruji still will not allow me to do dishes he'll say no no you clean the house i will do the dishes and we had a guest visiting us and that time my guruji was talking he was you know and he also parallelly came and cooked and he while he finished cooking you know once he cooked the food there were some dishes he left it in the you know in the sink for washing later because there was a guest in the meantime i had to finish my part of the work and and then i said no my guruji is not keeping well i know he will never allow me to clean the dishes so i quickly finished my part of the cooking i went you know and cleaned the dishes and that time when i was quickly washing the dishes i experienced a sense of joy i i am using the word joy it's not a joy it's a love and th- the first time in my life i understood when you do any task with love you do it with absolute bhakti bhakti is in devotion it could be as mundane as cleaning the vessels and this was a very practical experience which i went through which is what my guruji has been teaching how even in that mundane task you will experience god because you know you are offering a service to the divine lord how you will love that job and because of the love i was highly productive and efficient i was able to do the dishes in like 10 minutes time and that took perfectly well and feeling a sense of you know the that love that blissfulness i honestly cannot describe that experience adequately in words but you should experience it yourself when you offer or when you do any task as a service to the divine lord you will find that love that sense of blissfulness the joy within you of doing even the most mundane task and now that was when it was a revelation to me why my guruji is so highly efficient and how for him time is compressed he he is able to compress time and that is because he does everything with love alone there is no hatred any task that he performs he performs as that that is the ultimate thing like he is doing service to lord shri krishna that is himself alone he is he lord shri krishna himself that he is doing service to himself how beautiful is that state of mind and when we do whatever task you know we are going to give highest productivity we are going to be highly efficient and we are very focused so we are able to accomplish lot more in our life but what is missing in today's world today's world people are just doing it as a chore if you do any action any task as a chore then it becomes very painful for you every day to do this chore is a painful existence have you seen some of the housewives they have maids even after having maids they feel oh how much work i do they say oh morning till night i am doing so much work you know why they f- they do so much work that small task which can be finished in 10 minutes they will stretch it to 2 hours i'm not joking i I've, i've experienced this how you can stretch the time taken to complete that action to even 2 hours it happens 
and you can experience this yourself. It should all only take you 10 minutes or even 15 minutes max, but you will prolong it for the next two hours. Why? Because you're lost. You feel it's a painful thing to perform that task. It is painful to you to perform that action. You don't like it. See, why? Because you think you're doing it for someone else. Recently, I was teaching somebody. I told that person, when you think you're doing it for someone else, it is somebody's house. I have to do this for another person. Then you're never going to be loving what you're doing. But when you think that you're doing it for yourself, that self within you is the divine one. When you're serving the divine self, when you, when you believe it is my house, I'm doing it for myself. I'm doing it for the children. I'm doing it for you know, my family. That, that, uh, that, you know, the thought itself will change how you look at it. But when you're thinking that I'm doing it for someone else, oh God, it's painful every single day I have to do this for the person. Even if you have made, even if the maid comes and cleans the place and does all the work, you will still feel there is no, you have so much work to do. On the contrary, you're hardly, you're hardly doing anything. You're not, you're not being productive. You know what has happened to you? You become tamasic in nature. You become lethargy. Inertia is filled in you and you don't want to do anything. Your mind is rusting actually. Then what happens? Your life becomes, you become like a doormat. You become like a servant and that is the feeling you get. Why? Because you don't understand what it means to do everything with love and this is what my Krishna Guruji teaches and for the first time I experienced that truth see this lessons you need to get it get an understanding until you don't experience the truth you will not realize the teachings what it is being mentioned here so perform every action with love alone and see God in that you know my Guruji will get very angry if we get upset or if we feel you know I don't want to do something I don't want to mop I don't want to sweep or we do any task with anger because he'll say don't ever do any work with anger then it is not a service he says you you think you're doing a favor never do that do it with love you know what when we do service remember in one of the words Lord Sri Krishna says we have to render service to the Guru, the sages and the saints. That's when the knowledge about the truth will open for us. And when I was cleaning the dishes, there was so much love pouring. It was uncontrollable. I could not express adequately the joy that I felt, you know, performing the task. It's most beautiful experience, the state to be in. Then what happens? You know, you're on autopilot. Then this I doesn't exist. Every action of yours gets dedicated to the Divine Lord. Then you know you're just a mere tool. You're near an instrument in the hands of the Divine Lord. Whatever that you do, you're doing as a service unto the Divine Lord. Then what you become? You become a channel. You become a medium of the Lord Almighty. You become the best tool that exists. So that the Lord can use you to serve His purpose in this world. Isn't that so beautiful? So dedicate all actions to God according to the spirit of Karma Yoga. Karma Yoga means what? Yoga of action. It is union with God through action. In the spirit of Karma Yoga means selfless action alone. What you are performing is selfless action. So the Lord is saying that according to the spirit of Karma Yoga, which means selfless action, the spirit of Karma Yoga is we are not going to be bothered about the end result, what happens. You are just dedicating everything to the Divine Lord. And then what is he saying? Whose doubts have been dispelled by wisdom. Uh, and who is self-possessed? Whose doubts have been dispelled by wisdom? So what is that all this while Lord Shri Krishna is doing? He is imparting knowledge to Arjuna. The right knowledge. And in that what is he teaching? He is trying to cut asunder the ignorance through the knowledge. The power of knowledge. So he is saying whose doubts have been dispelled by wisdom. When do you get wisdom? Wisdom comes when you have knowledge, when you have the understanding. First, you need to understand. You know, yesterday, um, someone was visiting us. And this person, you know, she she's a young woman today. She is, you know, in her early career. But I asked her one question. What is your aspiration in life? What is that you want to achieve? And she didn't have an answer. So she told me, see, look, I am not ashamed to say, Right now, I don't know what I want in my life. I'm yet to find out. I don't know where I'm heading. I tried doing my, you know, CA, but I could not clear. And that let me 
down. I completely felt dejected and then I wasted a lot of time. I invested a lot of money so that I could become a chartered accountant, which was not possible because maybe I, I don't know if that was what I wanted, but I tried. Then she said, I did my graduation and then I took on a job. I took up a job. So I asked her, does it mean that one time you fail means you give up in your life? There are many people I know, the best of the CAs, who have not passed in one attempt, but they have to take, uh, they have to give the exams in many attempts. There are a lot of people who have done it for five times, ten times. It takes a lot of effort. You can't clear it in one, one attempt at all. Yeah, so there are super genius people, there are super brain, who will be able to crack it in one attempt itself. It's so there are options, there are different people like this. So I told her my own example. Yeah, even I have taken some exam three times and I flunk in it. But I didn't give up the first time. I tried the second time. I tried the third time. Then my Guruji said, look, you don't have to do this. It's okay. You've, you've lost that money. Think that you have offered it to me. It's just a like Krishna Arpan. That was the most beautiful thing my Guruji said. He didn't discourage me. He said, yeah, maybe your preparation was not enough. Maybe that was not meant for you. But it's okay. You can try something else. And I had a problem. I always have... Uh, issues with giving exams. I have exam fever. It's a, it's, uh, I'm already thinking that I'm going to fail. So obviously I'm going to fail. fail. It's not more fail. It's about, I want to come out with flying colors. So the moment you have that pressure, you're not going to give your best at what, what at best in your exam. Because you're already thinking of the end result. That is what Lord Sri Krishna is saying. The spirit of karma yoga. You can't keep thinking about the end result that I have to get so much marks, I have to come in first class. Yeah, we all have to aspire to get the best numbers, no doubts about it. But that cannot be the pressure under which you are writing an exam, right? You have to go with complete preparation and you have to just give your best shot at it, not bothering about the end result. And that is the spirit of Karma Yoga. And when do you understand this? whose doubts, the person whose doubts have been dispelled by wisdom. And this understanding comes, you know, when you have already cleared the doubts, the, the ability to say, okay, it's fine. I tried, it didn't work, but I can move on. So my Guruji was able to help me get out of it very fast. I did not feel, oh, I'm incapable. Failures are part of life. And that is something a human being doesn't accept. He thinks failing means it's something a disgrace because the way our society has defined success and failure is very relative. And that's what I was teaching her yesterday that success doesn't mean, you know, you have to, success doesn't mean, you know, you have to become a Bill Gates. What does success mean to each one of us? It depends and success varies. And failure doesn't mean you have to stop dreaming. You have to stop thinking that you can't succeed in life. Failure doesn't mean to say, think that, oh, you're a failure for eternity. That's not the way. So both this understanding is wrong. And that is when, when I cleared her doubts, the doubts was cleared. And then she got a little understanding. Then she said, oh, yes, I had never thought like this. I was never given this understanding. Why? Because I didn't have that knowledge. What was missing in her? The right knowledge. So through the knowledge, what happens? Who's possessed? Whose doubts have been dispelled by wisdom? So wisdom comes when knowledge is given, the right knowledge. And then it makes sense. Then you understand. Then you say, sure, it's okay. I tried once. I might not have succeeded, but I have still an opportunity to try, you know, once in one other attempt or I can do something else. Maybe that was not meant for me. I don't know. So you have to go within yourself to understand what is, uh, what are your strengths? What are your, you know, weaknesses so what should, what do you want to achieve in life so those are the things that you have to work but what happens is a human being gives up and then they just believe that their life is just an existence they have to earn they need to make a career so their dream their ambition also you know is very basic they are not able to dream big why because they think they will never be able to accomplish see one other very important lesson that you need to know is that you can dream you see, we all dream, I want to become Bill Gates, but you can't be a Bill Gates. There is only one Bill Gates, but you can aspire. You can become somebody better in your own life. You don't have to become Bill Gates, but you can become the best version of yourself, the best of you, who you are. But what is due to you will anyways come to you. And that doesn't mean, oh yeah, I, I, 
I aspire to be a Bill Gates, but you know what it took for Bill Gates to become Bill Gates? Yeah, he had to work a lot. He did a lot of things, but are you even putting that effort? So these are the questions that you need to ask. You have to have a big dream. Dreaming is important, but to make the dream happen, you have to first work really hard. And that is where the spirit of Karma Yoga comes, the you know yoga of action, that is selfless action. And yoga of action is when you will be able to attain, when you perform selfless service, when you think that every action is a service to the Divine Lord alone. And to this kind of person who has this understanding, actions do not bind them. And then what happens? He is self-possessed. Self-possessed in the sense he has that understanding. He's got the knowledge within himself. There is nothing that he's looking outside. He is self-possessed also means he's contented with everything that God has bestowed upon him. Yeah, you, you, you have a target in life. Okay, I want to make so many millions, billions, whatever, right? You can aspire. But do you think that that is what you will be able to achieve or attain or that is what is going to come to you? No, what is going to come to you will anyways come to you. But you need to have an aspiration. Look, I want to make so much money. There was a very interesting conversation this morning at a breakfast table. My Guruji, you know, I was telling him, I dreamt about having billions at an age, you know. Um, at, when I was in school, I said I want to become the greatest thing on this planet Earth and America is my dreamland. I'm going to become the world famous, you know, that's what I dreamt. And I have to go to America and achieve all of this. That was my dream. The next came, oh, I have to become a chairman and a CEO of a company. And then there's not, then I dreamt about I have to have billion dollars. Then for my Guruji asked me one very interesting question. Do you know how many zeros are there in, in a billion dollar? Uh, sorry, I want to make billion dollars. But he asked me, do you know how many zeros are there in a billion? Then I was like, wow, okay, I never know that. I just, so he said, don't talk in the air. First, you need to know. Know is very important. What is know means knowledge. Till you don't have the knowledge, how do you aspire to achieve billion dollars? So he said, don't talk anything in the air. So that's how our mind is. It just throws off things. Oh, you have to become that Bill Gates. You have to become Steve Jobs. You have to become a you know, superstar. We, we have this false way of dreaming. But first, you have to set realistic goals in life. That which you will be able to accomplish. Dream big, but you know, set realistic goals which will enable you to achieve and accomplish that. And when you slowly, slowly, you know, accomplish those small goals, then you will be able to go to the, towards that big goal. But without the small footsteps, you can't get there. You can't climb the ladder, you know, climb the, reach the sky. Uh, with one jump you can't you have to climb the steps one step at a time so that is very important and so when this knowledge is there within you you will be able to serve your purpose to the highest of your ability and not be attached to any of the action you will dedicate all actions to the divine lord as a service alone and that time it really hit me hard and then my Guruji asked me, you know, when he said this, okay, first is how, how many zeros are there in a billion? And the next question is, what have you done to achieve that? Wow, that was a shocker. So he said, it's not just thinking or dreaming. Yeah, everybody can dream, but everybody can't become Bill Gates just because you're dreaming of Bill Gates or dreaming of becoming like Bill Gates. So you must do something. So what is it all about? We're all coming back to square one. Where it all began is, Arjuna, lift your bow and arrow and shoot. It's about doership. It's about doing. And you know, we just love to talk. We, we, we talk more and do less. First, you have to do more and talk less. I'm sorry. What we, what I was trying, we talk more, yeah. We talk more and do less. So you have to first do more and talk less and be silent. That is something we have never learned. So the, it all comes back to one very important lesson. Action. Performing your action is very important. Without hard work, without action, without striving really hard, without arduous effort, you can achieve nothing in your life. There are no shortcuts to success. And please remember, whether it is Bill Gates, Steve Jobs, everybody, everybody is there in that position and that place because of their karma alone. What is it? Because of karma. They have got what? But look, it doesn't mean, when I say there are two things to this, when I say whatever they are is because of their karma is one aspect. But karma also makes them to do that action. That is what I'm trying to tell you. So what is very important? Doership. 
you have to perform. Arjuna, lift your bow and arrow and shoot. He's all that Lord Sri Krishna is teaching here. And it's still chapter 4. And still now, Arjuna has not accepted that I will fight the war. He's still questioning Lord Sri Krishna. Why should I do this? If you question why should you do this, then how will you become who you have to be? The Lord, please remember, has already predefined everything that you have to do in this world. Our destiny is predefined. So what are we resisting? So don't resist. You have to work. Doership is lies with not you. So you can't take the owner to the doership, but doership lies with you alone. You have to perform your duties to the hilt. So be the best. Dhanurdhar, that is what Arjuna is all about. He's the best Dhanurdhar. So be that one and do your actions to the highest of your ability, God-given abilities, which is within you. So God is using you as a tool, you know. So he's the one who's driving you within to get you to that, you know, destination. But if you say, I'm not going to do, then you can't reach that destination. That is what the Divine Lord is teaching. I hope this is understood by you. This is a very, very, very important lesson for all of us in our life. So never forget this. So let us continue. Verse 42. Therefore, Arjuna, slashing to pieces with the sword of knowledge, this doubt in your heart, born of ignorance, establish yourself in Karma Yoga in the shape of even-mindedness and stand up for the fight. Oh my God. I think this is exactly what we have been discussing so long. So what is the Divine Lord is te teaching Arjuna? He's saying, therefore Arjuna, slashing to pieces with the sword of knowledge, this doubts born, uh, this doubts in your heart, born of ignorance. Why do you doubt? Why do you say things I don't want, I, I will not, all those things. Why does it happen? Because of ignorance. So what does Lord Shri Krishna what, have, what has Lord Shri Krishna done to Arjuna? He has imparted the knowledge. So cut asunder the ignorance with the sword of knowledge. Born of your doubts. You know, sorry, born of ignorance. The doubts have born of ignorance. And these doubts are where? In your heart. So the moment you understand what happens, oh God, I know. Then your thinking changes. Then you'll say, now I will do it. It's the same thing happened to this young woman yesterday who I was talking to. She first, the moment I asked her some questions, she shut herself. She said, no, this is not what it is. No, I don't want to. Because she didn't even listen to me first. But once I gave her the complete understanding, she, what she had, the knowledge. And that knowledge made her say, now I want to do it. But what was covering her? The ignorance. What was she doubt? She was first doubting. Oh, is it real? Is this so? You know, her, in her mind, there were a lot of doubts. And the questions were, I don't want to. Because of the doubts. And that doubts come because of what? Ignorance. Because we don't want to learn. We don't want to listen. We always make judgments. So that is exactly what my Guruji also was teaching her. You should not judge anybody. First, get the knowledge. What is the most important thing you need to know is you need the knowledge and from the knowledge what you will have is understanding and when this understanding comes then what you are able to do is cut asunder the ignorance, cut asunder the ignorance in your heart which is because of the doubts, the doubt, sorry, you have to kill the doubts which is in your heart born of your ignorance and this ignorance when you dispel the ignorance the darkness through knowledge, the light of knowledge. That is when you will be able to do your duties to the highest of your ability. Then you will not question the Lord Sri Krishna. And then what is he saying? Establish yourself in Karma Yoga in the shape of even-mindedness. Ah. <laughs> this is what we have been discussing all along. Establish yourself in Karma Yoga in the shape of even-mindedness. What does even-mindedness mean? Whether it is success or failure, you cannot, you know, do yo-yo. That's why there is a beautiful saying, don't let success get your head and failure to your heart. The moment you let success get your head, then you have gone, you have fallen off. Then you will never be able to do anything in this world. You're always going to deter, you're going to be fearful. So even-mindedness is what is required. Then you will be able to establish yourself in Karma Yoga in the shape of even-mindedness and stand up for the fight. Now, when you have the even-mindedness, you are not going to say, Oh God, I'm going to kill my brothers. I'm going to kill my cousins. I'm, you know, they're going to die. 
none will affect you you know perfectly well it is your duty it is the karma you will have to fight and if you have to kill your own teacher your own you know grandsire you will have to do it there are no two ways about it because please remember the destiny is predefined the lord has already written you know we say you know we come with our destiny it's already written what has to be in our life so why are we resisting why are we fighting just let us do it if we have to be the best villain in our job let us be that no if god has already programmed that i have to be the best healer perform the job be the best villain to the hilt then duryodhana do his duty so well that is why you remember, you know what in the end it is not pandavas except arjuna nobody attained lord shri krishna so it is the pan it's the kauravas it is dushyasan and duryodhan who attained the heavens the pandavas were sent to hell you know why because they didn't do their duties it's only because of lord shri krishna did arjuna attain him it's only arjuna who reached lord shri krishna not the pandavas they all went to hell because they questioned they said they don't want to fight they did lot of things it is duryodhana and dushyasan who attained the heaven because they did their you know karma to the highest of their ability they were the best villains because that is what the lord had programmed so who am i to say i am not going to fight why is arjuna saying i will not fight so this is what the lord shri krishna has taught arjuna and this is the most esoteric knowledge please remember even in our life the reason we need to understand is that in our life we have to do lot of actions but please remember he is not asking arjuna to perform any adharmic action there is no adharma being performed he is not telling him to do anything that is adharma unrighteous action is never been taught by lord shri krishna lord shri krishna is imparting the most profound truth which is everything to do with dharma righteousness he is not teaching you to go and take bribes he is not teaching you to go and take you know do wrong things say a satya untruth no way he is not taking you to say you know swindle money in the name of god no he is not teaching all of that he is telling fight the war in the most righteous manner that is what he is imparted to arjuna that is a teaching he has given him so even in our life we have to always do everything that is following the path of dharma which is righteous action and dedicating all actions to god we will attain him alone through the yoga of action so with that let us end here and we will begin chapter 5 in our next satsang so thus in the upanishad sung by the lord the signs of brahma the script the scripture of yoga the dialogue between shri krishna and arjuna ends the fourth chapter entitled the yoga of knowledge as well as the disciplines of action and knowledge thank you once again for joining the bhagavad gita satsang the way of life as described by lord shri krishna to arjuna om shri maha ganapate namaha om shri gurudev dat ओम श्री सचिदानंद सद्गुरु साईनाथ महाराज की जय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय दिगंबरा दिगंबरा श्री पाद वल्लभ दिगंबरा ओम श्री कृष्ण गुरुनाथ नाथाय श्री गुरुवे नम ओम देवी दुर्गाय नम ओम श्री कृष्णार्पण नमस्तु कृष्ण वंदे जगद्गुरु